Rugby World Rankers, folks, for the 14th of August, 2023. World Cup warm-up games have been in action for a couple of weeks. We will see them for a few more weeks before the tournament proper. And sadly, what goes hand-in-hand hand with these Rugby World Cup warm-up games are the injuries that occur in these Rugby World Cup warm-up games. And we've lost genuinely one of the best players in the world in Roman Intermac to injury, which is a bit of bloody tragic news for France, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Dan Carter getting injured. Home tournament, one of the best players in the world, gets injured. At least he made the tournament. And Tamak has picked up an injury in a warm-up game, so won't even feature in the tournament itself. But that's really bad news for him. Uh, fortunately for France, they have Jalibert, who is a very capable replacement. But at the World Cup, man, no matter which team you follow, you want to see the best players playing. And Tamak is certainly one of those, so... I feel for him, man, that's brutal, but um, like he said in a social media post, he will be back. He's still young enough um, to get to another World Cup, but I mean, just, that's just bad news, isn't it? Van Portfleet, likewise, for England is injured. I mean, before that, we had Al Alatoa for Australia. Um, the three South African guys are all kind of under an injury cloud at the moment and um, not named in the squad. So, yeah, there'll be more. There will be more. All we can do as Hope as fans is that the damage is kind of minimal as the teams get up to speed for the Rugby World Cup in just over a month's time. Under a month's time. Goodness me. Um, Ireland 1, New Zealand 2. No changes there. Those teams didn't play. France, in that win over Scotland, which was hard fought and which cost them Roman Intermac, they still have picked up some points. So they have kind of moved up slightly from 89.00 to 89.22. So um, a little bit of a gain just in terms of rugby world rankings. South Africa still there in fourth. Scotland did lose a little bit of pointage, but they're in fifth. England gained a little bit from the Welsh. Uh, not a heck of a lot up from 81.01 uh, to 81.53. Still the same spot for them. Argentina the same. Australia is the same. But, and you may have noticed that I've got two extra teams on the whiteboard. There is a little bit more space. I could probably even get 20 teams on here if I really wanted to. But uh, Fiji. Fiji have passed Wales. Fiji didn't have to do anything in this week just gone. It was more that Wales lost that saw Fiji go up. But remember, Fiji are on the backs of wins over Japan, away from home. Uh, I think it was Samoa away from home and Tonga at home. So Fiji are on a good run. Now they're playing France this weekend which will be maybe a better test because clearly Fiji at the moment are a cut above those three teams I just mentioned. But how will they fare up against kind of one of the real big guns remains a question. If you're Wales or if you're Australia, you are watching that game this weekend with a great deal of interest. But well done, Fiji, uh, on this side of the whiteboard, even if it is with a couple of extra teams featured. But this is the, the, the left side of the whiteboard is where you want to be, ultimately. Wales... Uh, down into 10th, which is not where they want to be, although I think they'll still take some positives from that kind of hard watch game against England that they switched all the players. But the fact that they were 15 on 12, still conceded a try and managed to throw away a pretty decent lead will be disappointing. But it's a rugby World, World Cup warm-up game. If Wales have any kind of run at the World Cup, no one's going to remember that game. But yeah, uh, you'd rather get that one out of the way early, I suppose. Uh, Georgia, Samoa, Italy, Japan. You may notice that Japan... Since I haven't done these rankings for a fortnight, um, they did drop at the end of that Pacific Nations Cup with that loss to Fiji. Um, they lost to Samoa and Fiji in that campaign. Remember, they played all three games at home to Japan. So if they're going to find some form, it needs to be pretty soon. Um, England and Argentina, I mean, when the World Cup draw was made, would have probably still backed themselves against Japan, but even more so now. Japan, if they're going to find some form... Need to get that done ASAP. Tonga's there. Portugal, whose jersey I'm wearing, which is a pretty sweet looking jersey if I do say so myself, um, had a big win over the United States, who's the team they beat to qualify for the World Cup. And um, they have gained some pointage, if not a kind of position on the log. And then Uruguay and uh, USA are there as well. USA are the highest ranked team on the rankings who will not be in attendance at the World Cup. Not that they didn't have their chances to qualify, but yeah, they lost 46-20. Uh, to the Portuguese at the weekend. So, um, yeah, other teams off the board. Romania's there in 19th. Namibia's 21st. Chile's 22nd. Chile lost to Namibia, actually. Namibia at the uh, at the weekend. Not that I've seen it, but it seems like it was a pretty close fought one. But, um, yeah, interesting times as we head into a Rugby World Cup. Games on this weekend. Wales are taking on South Africa. Wales could bounce back 
onto this side of the whiteboard if they were to get a win. Uh, South Africa, though, could pass France if they were to get a win because France, in their game against Fiji, with the gap being what it is, more than 10 points, and France being at home as well, means France cannot gain any points from Fiji, no matter what the result is if they win. Like, even if they win by 100 points, not going to matter. Um, so France could potentially be passed by South Africa. Uh, Ireland, likewise, can't take any points from England. Uh, the gap is just too big. So it's one of those tough ones where you're the team that's so far at the top, it kind of gets harder to take points from teams. But I guess that is the price you pay. Whereas England could, um, could send New Zealand first if England was to get an away win over the Irish. So, yeah, England, I think, would take a full two points from the Irish if they were to get a win. So New Zealand could potentially go to number one in the world without having to lift a finger uh, this weekend. Fiji could pass Australia if they were to beat France. But, um, yeah, there's heaps of rugby going on this weekend. Uh, I think Georgia's also playing the USA. Italy's playing Romania. Romania also got hammered by Georgia uh, at the weekend, just gone 56-6. So it doesn't bode too well for the Romanians. But, um, yeah, rugby world rankings for this week. You guys let us know your thoughts. How fairly or not do you reckon they are sitting? What do you reckon about Fiji? Uh, being on this side with some of the kind of big guns. How do you think Wales uh, prospects are? Can you see any teams on this side of the whiteboard doing anything kind of spectacular at the World Cup? How's Italy going to go in their pool with the likes of France and New Zealand at the moment? It, uh, it still looks like a pretty tall order. Can you see Georgia maybe being in the dark horse in their pool? Everyone is talking up Fiji, but like I said, Georgia just had a massive win. Is there anything they could do? Um, if you want to check out some other kind of rugby videos, we'll be doing the old depth charts for some of the sides. Done South Africa, done England, and done New Zealand thus far, keeping in mind that a couple of the guys who've been mentioned in the depth charts, like Van Portfleet, are no longer eligible, but certainly they'll give you an idea about how the teams are kind of tracking in terms of their World Cup prep. Wait till you see the Australian one, which I've just recorded but haven't quite chucked out yet it is um, going to be on patreon first and then up on uh, the channel shortly so yeah the aussie one is messy but um anyway you guys let us know your thoughts and um, i'll talk to you guys again soon see you later.